Hey everyone, it's Kyle here. Today's tutorial video is going to be all about differentials. A differential is an essential mechanical component for anyone looking to make a car style robot. And it's pretty important because it solves one of the fundamental issues that all wheeled vehicles face. That is when they turn, the outside wheel travels a larger distance than the inside wheel and thus needs to turn faster. What the differential allows you to do is it allows the drive motor to split its torque between the inside and the outside wheel such that the outside wheel can spin faster while still delivering torque and rotation to both wheels. The differential was first invented by Leonardo da Vinci way long time ago and he th thought about this problem about how the outside wheels need to travel a longer distance and he invented the differential for a lot of the wheeled carts of the time. Now the thing is the wheeled carts in da Vinci's time were powered, they were still being drawn by horses so there was really not much of a need for a differential but it just goes to show just how far ahead of his time Leonardo da Vinci was that he was thinking that far ahead which I think is pretty amazing. I don't know what do you guys think. Anyway that's enough about that now we're gonna dive in and learn all there is to know about Lego differentials. A differential works by allowing both of the drive wheels to spin at a different speed around the turn while still applying torque to both of them. So I'll demonstrate here. As you see, this is the input shaft. When I turn this, the wheels turn. Now when I go around a turn, they can both spin at the same speed even though I'm still turning the input with my hand. That's the differential at work, splitting up the torque between each of the wheels according to which one needs it more so that the outside wheel can turn faster than the inside wheel around a turn, enabling the car to actually steer. By contrast, a solid axle, which I'm showing here, always forces both wheels to have the same amount of torque and spin at the same rotation speed. So as you can see, as I turn this to make it go forward and try to go around the turn, it's naturally going to resist turning. It's not nearly as smooth as the differential, which allows for much easier turning. The differentials that LEGO makes are a type of differential called an open differential. And this is the simplest type of differential. Now I'll explain what open differential means later in the video. But as you can see, they're very simple because it just consists of the gray differential housing and three sand colored spider gears inside the housing, which all rotate past each other. So what happens in the differential is the motor's torque is applied directly to the gray housing and then the spider gears move around inside. So the left spider gear is connected to the left half shaft, the right spider gear is connected to the right half shaft, and then in the middle is a spider gear which allows the torque to be split between the two. And that's how the differential divvies up the torque between each of the drive wheels that are connected to allow for smooth turns. You also notice that there are two different differentials that LEGO makes. They're both open differentials, and the difference between them is the type of casing that they're housed in, which dictates what they can be used for and what they're good for. So I'll explain the two different types of differentials right now. First up, we have the parallel differential. The parallel differential works pretty conveniently with either an NXT motor or an EV3 large motor to create a simple rear wheel drive drivetrain for a car. This is because the power output on both of these motors comes out of the side of the motor, which allows for all of the axles in your car's drivetrain to be parallel to one another. That's why I call this the parallel differential. This is the differential that I used in my terminal velocity remote control race car, which had a simple rear wheel drive drivetrain. To assemble this type of differential, you're going to take the differential housing and start by inserting the middle spider gear onto this peg in the middle of the differential. Be sure not to flip it upside down because there's nothing holding this gear in place yet. Then you're going to take the left and the right spider gears and slide them into their respective places in the differential but make sure that you hold them from falling out the back with your finger because there are no grooves on this type of differential to keep them from falling all the way through. So you're going to insert the left gear and then insert the left axle directly into it and once the axle has gone through the gear the differential is then locked in place. What I also recommend you do, this is not required but it's going to help keep the differential together a little bit better, is take a half bushing and insert it onto the end of the axle as so and this will keep the axle from pulling out of the differential and when that happens of course everything falls apart all of the gears will fall out so this is going to strengthen the differential a bit and then you're going to do the same thing 
on the other side take the axle insert the gear uh, into the differential as such and then take your half pushing and insert that side and then lock it into place with the axle and this is the completed parallel differential you'll notice with Lego's parallel differential that on one side of the housing there are 24 teeth and on the other side there are 16 teeth and this gives you a few different options for mounting and driving the differential so on the 16 tooth side you could choose to drive it with another 16 tooth gear and that gives you a one to one ratio on the 24 tooth side you can also choose to drive it with another 24 tooth gear that also gives you a one to one ratio but it'll take up a little bit more space you can also choose to drive the 24 tooth side with the large 40 tooth gear which will gear up your uh, ratio a little bit more since there's no external housing required for this type of differential it's up to you to build something to have it interface with the gear that it's driven by and for best results you should always put a beam across both the, the power axle and the differential axle on the side where the gear is meshing with the differential and this will give a strong robust connection with the differential uh, which will prevent the power from slipping as it's applied to the differential. One really cool feature of LEGO's parallel differential is that it actually has the clutch teeth on either side of the differential housing and this allows you to have the differential interface with these red synchro mesh elements so as you can see here I have one directly on one of the half shafts and putting this on just one of the half shafts means that when you slide this in the differential becomes locked and it acts as one solid axle then when you slide it out again it's able to work as an open differential again so this is a convenient way to make a locking differential this also has some applications and some other cool transmission applications and you can really go crazy with this. I took advantage of this feature when I designed the Thundersmart Muon which is the six wheel drive version of the Thundersmart. The back two axles had these red synchro mesh elements controlled by a media motor so I could electronically lock the back two axles together to turn them into solid axles and this of course as you can see used the red synchro element. The second type of differential that LEGO makes is called the 90 degree or perpendicular differential and this is because the power input is perpendicular 90 degrees to the output axle. This is also called a ring and pinion gear when it's applied to cars in real life and this type of differential most closely resembles the type of differential that's used in real life cars. This type of differential is most conveniently used with either power functions motors or the EV3 medium motor because these motors have their power output coming out of the front of the motor like a traditional electric motor. These will take a little bit more work to use with the NXT motors or the EV3 large motors. However, the main advantage of this differential is that you can easily do a four-wheel drive drivetrain because you can have two of these differentials facing opposite each other and then connect them with a long shaft going down the middle and attach the drive motor to this long shaft. You'll just have to note that you'll need the ring on the differential housing on opposite sides if you're going to make this work because otherwise if the rings are on the same side then your axles will spin in opposite directions and your car cannot drive. These are the kinds of differentials that I use in all of my four-wheel drive cars, such as the Thunder Smart 4. To assemble this type of differential, you're going to start, of course, with the differential housing itself, but you need to identify which side is up. As you can see, each side on the inside has these small semicircle-like grooves uh, that allow the spider gears to fit in, and this is the top of the differential, which is important to identify, whereas this is the bottom. So you're going to take the middle spider gear and that's the first gear you're going to insert onto this middle peg and it's going to just slide on like that. Be careful because they can still easily fall out. Then you're going to take the other two spider gears and drop them into the groove like so. And the groove will hold the left and the right gears in place. So after you have all three of those spider gears in, you're then going to hold it in place within the beam frame like this. Make sure not to turn the gears upside down otherwise they're all going to fall out. And then insert into the differential housing the left and right half shafts. The final step then is to add 
the pinion gear which interfaces with the ring gear of the differential and you're going to slide an axle in to lock that in. Then you have the completed 90 degree differential and notice at this point since these half shafts are connected to these inner gears they will not fall out when the differential inverts. Because the 90 degree differential requires you to use this frame as a housing you only get one option for mounting and driving the differential which is shown here with the ring and pinion setup. You can only use the 20 tooth gear to drive the differential. This also locks you into one gear ratio which is slightly reduced. Since it's a 20 tooth gear driving the 28 tooth ring the final drive ratio on this assembly ends up becoming 0.714 to 1 or thereabouts which means that each time this rotates once, the input rotates one whole rotation, this will rotate 71% of one rotation. So the output is slightly slower than the input on this differential. The main advantage of having everything contained within this beam frame is that it's extremely robust. In all the years that I've used these LEGO differentials, I've never had a 90 degree differential slip because it's all held together by the sturdy beam frame. The parallel differential, on the other hand, has quite a problem with slipping and can do so often. Now that you've learned about both types of differentials and seen what they can do on their own, you know that one differential might be preferred over the other depending on the application you're trying to use it for. You may be surprised to learn that it's actually possible to use both types of differentials in the same creation together. And this is something that I did with the E-Rally. So this was a remote control car that I made that had a special four-wheel drive system with three different differentials. It had the conventional 90 degree differential on the front axle and one on the rear axle, but instead of them being joined together by a solid axle, in the middle there was another differential, and this was the parallel differential, which acted at the, as the center differential. And the entire drivetrain was driven off of two NXT motors which directly drove the 24 tooth gear side of the center differential and from there the center differential distributed the torque to the front axle and to the back axle simultaneously. Now the reason why I chose to use three differentials is the addition of the center differential actually helps to make the four wheel drive system more agile. The advantage of having a third differential in the center of your four wheel drive system is it allows the drive motor's torque to be split four ways independently between each of the four wheels. So each of the four wheels is spinning as, at its own speed as the robot steers, which makes for the smoothest turning possible. The disadvantage of having three differentials in your four-wheel drive system is that if any one of the wheels lifts off the ground, all of the drive motor's torque will be directed into that one wheel that's no longer on the ground, and it'll just keep spinning and your robot will become stranded. So if you're thinking about driving over bumps, it might pay to design some kind of suspension system for your car to keep all four of the wheels planted. Both of the LEGO differentials that we discussed today are a type of differential called an open differential. In an open differential, the torque always takes the path of least resistance. So if one of the wheels becomes locked, all of the torque is going to immediately go to whatever wheel is freewheeling. So in practice, if you have a car that's driving around and one of its drive wheels lifts off the ground, all of the torque is going to go to that one wheel that's freewheeling and your robot becomes stranded. In most real world cars, this isn't such a big issue because the car's suspension keeps all four wheels planted on the ground at all times so none of them slip. However, some sports cars have more demanding needs which necessitate some kind of solution to this path of least resistance problem. So instead of using an open differential, a sports car may use a limited slip differential which uses friction plates, torque vectoring which uses active clutches, or even in some cases a torsion differential which uses worm gears. As a matter of fact there's even a 3D printable Lego torsion differential. Now you see how differentials are such an important yet fascinating contraption. Thank you for watching my video this week. If you haven't already go check out my new book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots and it's available on Amazon. Also if you're new to this channel and you like this video be sure to click that subscribe button to see more tutorials like this every single Thursday. Thank you and I'll see you next week.